Welcome to Engineering Roundtable. I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you how I made this out of a couple of servos, a color light sensor, and some other stuff I had laying around the shop. What is it? Well, it's a camera, obviously. A big, ugly camera. The big, ugly camera came about because I've always been interested in photography. And I've always been making these little homemade cameras, uh, especially pinhole cameras, which are a type of camera that don't use a glass optic in the front. Instead, they use a pinhole to direct light into the camera and onto the film. This is one of the pinhole cameras that I made. You can see it's just a very basic pinhole in the front in a piece of uh, brass foil. And then when you open up the back, it's just an empty box. The film goes in there, across the back, image comes through the front, is projected onto the film, and takes a photograph. So I always wanted to take the same concept and apply it to a digital camera. And the way that you would do that is you would just put an image sensor in the back of this instead of a piece of film. Now an image sensor is essentially a large array of photodiodes or some other photoreactive uh, electronic that can take the level of the light that's coming in and turn it into something that a computer controller can understand. Image sensors in a commercial camera are small and uh, very high density. There's lots and lots of individual photodiodes in those. And if you wanted to build your own, you'd have to start with an individual discrete photodiode and um, those aren't very small and you would have to build a huge array of them and they're not cheap so you would end up with a very expensive very large low resolution camera so I decided what you could do instead of packing a bunch of them side by side is just move it and it'll take you longer to take a picture but you can get away with using only one sensor. I started by building a prototype. I used just a regular uh, photoresistor. And this is just a photo cell from our catalog and I've put a little piece of shrink tube on it to sort of columnate it and make it a directional sensor. So instead of picking up ambient light, it should theoretically pick up only what it's seeing in front of it. I put it on this little gantry that I sort of hot glued together out of junk PC boards and uh, potentiometers. So these potentiometers are here because they allow me uh, to read their position and then uh, put that into a processing sketch so that I always know the position of this thing. I have to swivel it by hand and sort of paint in the image this way, but uh, the, the program then knows which pixels on the, on the picture to fill in with the data from this sensor. This didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Uh, partially because of the sweeping motion back and forth, it is not a great photographic motion. Even though this is a relatively tight radius, by the time you get out uh, a good ways to where your subject is, you're missing a lot of information in between each of those steps. I never quite got what I wanted out of this. I could set it on my desk here in the office, and you could see where the lights were in the ceiling, and that's about all you could make out. And uh, it's only black and white, so even if I got a good photo, it would be a black and white photo, and it would be really low res. So the big ugly camera uses a different type of light sensor altogether. This is actually using the HJDJ color light sensor, which is actually an array of photodiodes that have color filters over them. It can get the red channel, green, and blue channel all separate levels. So you could actually uh, detect the color of an object based on the light that's reflecting back at you. That makes it essentially just like a single pixel in a regular CMOS image sensor. What I needed now was to turn that one pixel into a whole bunch of pixels. And the way that I accomplished that was by creating sort of an XY gantry uh, like you would find inside of a CNC machine or uh, a laser cutter or something like that that would sweep the single pixel back and forth across the image plane and pick up that information. I built that using a couple of servos. I could have used stepper motors. Stepper motors would yield a higher resolution. I wasn't exactly hopeful that this was going to turn out great, so I didn't want to dump a lot of work into getting the stepper motors to work right off the bat. I connected all of those things back to an Arduino Pro, and I wrote a sketch on the Arduino Pro that takes that information uh, in packets and sends it back to my computer where I use a processing sketch to interpret it into an image. When I first tested this, I didn't have any optics on it. I didn't have a lens in the front, which you can see in the front flap of the box. I have a lens, and this lens is actually just a macro uh, lens filter for my digital camera and it turned out to work great for this application but before I figured that out I needed a way to make sure that I was getting image data back from this um, that was coherent and sort of laid out spatially the way it should be but without having to fiddle with um, 
the focal length of the optics and everything. There's an onboard LED on these breakout boards because um, what it's intended to be used for is to determine the color of something when you sit it on top of it. So it has its own light source uh, right beside the sensor that lights up so it casts light out, light bounces back and it picks it up. I went ahead and turned on that LED through a potentiometer so I could adjust the brightness. So I was looking around my office for something I could scan and I had this greeting card, which is a nice bright color image. So I knew it would come through pretty well. And I just taped it on top of the sensor so it couldn't move and scanned back and forth and tried to build an image in my processing sketch that looked something like this. As you can see, the results were kind of a dark yellow color, but uh, the image is definitely there. So I knew I was on to something. I actually took that image put it into Photoshop, adjusted the white balance, and then rotated it so that it was the right direction. And when you look at that image, it looks a lot closer to the original greeting card image. So that scan that I showed you took about 45 minutes to do, uh, which rivals some of the early Apple scanners in terms of pure inconvenience. So it starts at the bottom row and moves from here all the way over to this side. And every time that this gear stops moving just a little bit, it sends some data back. And then when it gets to the end of this row, it'll go up, return back to the beginning of the line, and it'll start the next row. This is a really long exposure. And because it's not an exposure all at once over the entire uh, picture on the film, it's sort of a progressive scan exposure. It can be really difficult to get a nice consistent photograph unless you have total control over the lighting in an area. The reason that it takes so long to do a scan is because for every pixel in the image, and it's about 160, 150 pixels by 150 pixels. For each of those pixels, it has to move and then read the color light sensor, send that information back to processing, which puts a pixel on the screen, and then processing has to tell it, go ahead and move and send me another pixel. And it does that a few thousand times and builds this image. The reason it's limited to that resolution of about 150 pixels square is because of the servos. The servos uh, have a resolution of one degree over 180 degrees. And because my gantry was built uh, to have a little bit of leeway on either side, I can't take full advantage of that 180 degrees. So I end up with about 150 either way. The processing sketch builds the image on screen by uh, writing a square, a four by four pixel square in the position that's indicated by the servos. So the pixels overlap as it builds the image and sort of averages all the pixels in an area together to create an image that's, uh, it's sort of an interpre interpretation. It's a loose interpretation of what you're scanning instead of a photographic image of what you're scanning. There's actually two pieces of code here. There's one that goes on the Arduino that's inside the camera. And then there's a piece of processing code that's running on my computer that actually builds the image. In the Arduino code, I've basically just declared a couple of servos, one for my X and one for my Y. And then in the main loop here, I wait for serial information to come in. The reason that I only act when I see serial come in is because I wanted some way for the processing sketch to be able to tell the Arduino to send another piece of data. That way, in theory, I could run this thing as fast as I wanted to, and neither side would get ahead of the other one. You don't end up with these weird race conditions. In the Arduino sketch, it waits for that serial byte to come in. And when it gets that, it starts scanning across. And I've built sort of this uh, while loop inside of a while loop that automates that whole process of figuring out where to go next. And all it does really is it scans all the way to the end of a row, and once it gets there, it, go, it moves the column up one and comes back to the beginning. Every time it does that, it reports the position of the servos, and it also reports the analog read value for the red, green, and blue channels from the color sensor. All of those things go out of the serial port uh, as comma separated values. After that, it goes back to the beginning of the loop where it's waiting for serial information again. So basically, it gets a byte, it finds out what the next pixel is in the picture, and it sends it back and it waits for another byte. In the processing sketch, what I'm doing is I'm actually building that image that you see that comes out of the camera. What I start by doing in my sketch is I open up a window that's 500 pixels tall, 500 pixels wide, and then I open up the serial port and I send a character to the camera. In this case, I just send an A. It's an arbitrary character. 
Uh, all the camera wants, like I said, is just something to come in on the serial port. So I send that A, and then the Arduino sketch grabs that, figures out, okay, I need to move and report my position and the color information. It does that, sends back that string that's separated by commas, and processing gets that, uh, reads it into a string object, and then cuts it up based on where those commas are. Once it's done that, it draws a box based on uh, the servo value and then the color from the color data. So the way that I did that was I called the fill function to set my color before I draw anything. And the fill function takes uh, three arguments. It takes uh, the red value, green value, and blue value. And those are all 0 to 255. So you take uh, the fill function, you call it, you pass it these three values, and that's what color anything's going to be when you draw it on the screen next. And then I open up, uh, I create a couple of float uh, values. I create an X and a Y. The reason I do that is I need to take that information about where my servos are and relate it to where my current pixel is on this 500 by 500 screen. I created X first and then I use the map function to map a value from 0 to 100, which is my servo position in the X dimension, to a value from 0 to 500, which is obviously my position in the X dimension in my window on the computer. And I do the same thing for Y. I mapped uh, 40 to 170, which was my Y servo values, to 0 to 500. All I had to do uh, to actually make the picture is I just draw a rectangle uh, at that X and Y value uh, using those fill values and that's one pixel. Then it goes back to the beginning of this whole uh, draw loop and it sends that A again and the camera goes, oh, I need, to send, I need to move and then send more color information back. It does this over and over until finally um, the Arduino sketch stops sending information and the processing sketch just stops because it's no longer getting data. And what you end up with is basically a picture. One of the tricks that I did to get something that looked a little more like a photo is that I actually drew all of my pixels slightly too big. They're about twice as big as they need to be. Then I uh, turned down the opacity of all of them. So they kind of overlap and mesh together and, and um, blur so that you can actually infer more information than is actually there. It's kind of a trick on your eyes to make you think that it's more photo than it really is. So when I start the processing sketch, I actually have my camera hooked up and you'll see that it opens up that window and it starts filling it in. And here it started at 0, 0 and it just moves across the screen filling in each of these boxes based on the color it's getting. And uh, once it gets to the end of this row, you'll see it'll come back to the beginning here. And because there's sort of a gap in time for the servo to get back to here, it actually skips a couple of pixels at the beginning. There's a little empty row right here. Um, but you can see as the pixels overlap, it gets darker in the middle because they're actually just semi-opaque. And so uh, the color mixes together in between. But I have taken one photo that proves that it is in fact a camera. It's a picture of a studio light facing directly at the camera. This was actually too much light. It clipped a little bit. But uh, it is a photographic effect. I was really excited when I started that experiment because I set up the studio lamp facing the camera and I started the application, looks just like this, and I noticed that it was all black at the top. There was no light coming through, which was a good thing because there was a studio light pointed directly at it. So if it wasn't a camera, all of the pixels would be white, right? I mean, you would have the sensor just picking up, oh, there's a huge amount of light shining in through the front of the camera. But since it is a camera and there was an optic there, there's lots of dark pixels surrounding what I should find out is a bright circle in the middle. Well, thanks for watching Engineering Roundtable. That was the Big Ugly Camera. Uh, I've been looking at your suggestions. There were a lot of really awesome project ideas in there. The next one I'm going to do, I think, is uh, there's this robe or this hoodie you can buy, apparently, that has uh, motion detectors in the sleeves and you can kind of cast spells with it. Uh, it has LEDs and sound effects that it does based on gesture recognition. And I'm not a huge like fantasy guy, I'm more of a sci-fi guy, so while casting spells isn't really my thing, I think e-textiles could use some love on this show. So I'm going to tackle that next. As always, 
put your comments in the comments below and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions about this project or about future projects. So uh, hit me with those. I'll be happy to talk to you and thanks for watching Engineering Roundtable.